We have a range of ways in which we determine how we provide our funding. But one of the key underlying reasons that we would give to an organisation is actually wrapped around our staff. So whenever an organisation approaches us for funding, one of the first questions that we'll ask is, well, how is Macquarie through its staff already supporting you? So our philosophy is very much about working in partnership with Macquarie staff. We see them as our uh, tentacles, if you like, into the communities and the, the causes and the uh, programs that they feel most passionate about and the ones that they want to work for or they want to personally support is going to be the entree point then for the foundation in terms of determining where we place our funds. So presumably, Julie, one thing you have to be concerned about is just what impact, social impact, community impact, environmental impact, your support is having on organisations. Sure. As you would understand, with a staff of some 14,500 globally, that could actually translate into 14,000 different organisations. So what we also do is have a more strategic uh, funding model as well. So we look to provide support in a more broader basis to the um, sector as a whole. We have a very high um, regard for capacity building within the sector. So there might be projects and organisations that we fund that don't necessarily meet that criteria of grassroots staff engagement, but have a real impact on the sector as a whole. It might be around funding, for example, the only uh, chair of cerebral palsy research in the world. Now, we've got staff who are very involved with and supportive of children and, and adults with cerebral palsy through their volunteering and fundraising activity. But strategically, that wasn't necessarily going to have a huge impact on finding what causes cerebral palsy. So by making a conscious strate strategic decision to fund and help establish the only chair of cerebral palsy in the world, then we've taken that quantum leap, if you like, to actually invest in a broader, broader framework of, of support and research. Now, interestingly, Julie, you said invest in. So this isn't just about philanthropy. In a real sense, you see this as investing in social impact. Absolutely. Um, I think... One of the things that has changed over the last 25 years and indeed perhaps even more quickly in the last 10 years has been that whole notion of social investment, even dare I say it, of social return on investment. So we're always looking to, to make a wise decision about where we allocate our funding or where we invest um, our philanthropic dollar with the, with the mindset, I guess, that what we're investing in is going to have a worthwhile impact onto the community. Now that measurement might take years or it might be more immediate, but one of the reasons that we, we go back to that premise of making sure that we've got staff involvement is that we would then ensure that senior staff are perhaps on the board of the organisation or there's a, a senior uh, staff or skilled sets, <coughs> skill sets out of our staff that are going to add value to that organisation in terms of delivering the outcomes as part of the funding. So what you find us doing is not only just writing the cheque, if you like, and sending that off, but there will be an engagement at a, at a whole range of levels within the organisation to, to not necessarily watch over the money, but to add value and be a guardian in terms of making sure that the investment is providing the outcomes that the organisation has asked for and has demonstrated that they can achieve.